Hello, my name is Bill Haley, and this is for Haley 2024, the movement's government reform ideas. Now, this video is going to be on land and water. Now, that's one of the 30 sectors. This is the 30th of the 30 sectors. So why are you proposing a new constitu constitution for the United States? It will replace the current constitution. It will replace all the state constitutions and create local constitutions. The aim is more competitive governance, and it's going to give more freedom and liberty going in that direction. But for the people who want to um, have more socialism and more government in their lives, they can have that, but it's within their selected governing agency. So let's go for the full um, constitution, proposed change. Then I'll discuss how land and water is going to be involved in that. So this video is going to be land and water, but we're going to take about five to seven minutes and go over the whole constitution. A quick overview. I have a lot of overviews out there, a lot longer. And every aspect of this is going to be, um, I have videos on. Anywhere from a half an hour to about hour 20 minutes. So there's a lot of videos, a lot of hours on this um, idea here. A lot of ideas. So the first idea is to separate all government power into 30 sectors. With distinct top level elected leaders per sector. So that means no one person is over top of, let's say, the police and healthcare. Over top of environmental um, law and education. Over land and water and the diplomats. The uh, family law and the prisons. Every one of those people, I mean every one of those sectors has distinct executive, legislative, and judicial um, authorities or um, people. So there's distinct um, things. So let's just talk about this real quick. We're going to multiply Congress by 30, the president by 30, the federal judiciary by 30. Same thing with the state governors, state legislatures, and state um, judicial department. Multiply them by 30. Same thing with the um, city. The mayor or city manager, however your city is structured, the um, city council, and then there is city courts and everything like that. So we're going to multiply them all by 30. We don't multiply the power. We divide the power up and give 30, um, 1 30th to each of the sectors, or roughly 1 30th. So that's what we're doing right here. So no one person is in charge of more than one sector. You have to pick your state, local, or federal. You have to pick your um, sector. You have to pick whether you're going to be on the rating side or the CRA side. I'll talk about that in a second. But you have to, uh, we separate powers significantly. So people who are running for office in the city land and water is not the same people who are going to be running for um, office in education. So you're going to get more people who are steeped in education to run for education um, sector. People who want to talk about land and water or human resources or the military, they're going to run for their sector. So you're going to be more specialized. So let's keep on going. The biggest change. You get to select your competitive governing agency. So competitive governing agencies are CRAs, competitive regulatory agencies, but they govern, they send representatives, and then they regulate. So we're going to call them CRAs, competitive regulatory agencies. But these are full governmental systems with executive, legislative, and judicial branches. So it's highly important to understand that every CRA has that. But we have to recognize that some things will have to go to a monopolized um, level. Some oversights. With military oversight, the um, law enforcement oversights, we have some oversights going on out there. The rating agency is going to be given high quality information from a wide variety of perspectives, but it's going to limit the um, standards getting so low as to create a significant negative externalities. So everybody has to be governed. They have to pick their um, CRA, one of, run of roughly 12, so you select first. Then within your selection, within your group, then you um, vote. So like-minded people, let's say everybody who likes the Heritage Foundation will probably group together. Everybody who likes the Brookings Institute will group together. If you like the um, libertarian groups, you can ju um, group together with those people. Um, Democrat, Republican Party, you can gr group together. Then within your group, you pick who governs you. So if you like Donald Trump or Ted Cruz, you can pick groups with them. If you like Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, AOC, and you like their philosophy, you can be governed by groups of people who also enjoy their philosophy. So you join the one that you want to join with. And if you don't like any of them, there'll be other ones, middle of the road and everything. So you get you have to be governed, but you have to um, but you get to select who's going to govern you. Then within your governing group, you elect your leadership and then they govern. Now, 
Up above that is the monopolized sector board. Everybody, all the CRAs send representatives up there. And if things are going to cause a significant negative externality, or you just need to have monopolized governance for a very few things, then um, they have to have a super, super majority, 70%, to, uh, and it has to be a significant negative externality, then they can make the regulations. Still govern and bureaucracy through the CRAs, but regulations through at the monopolized level, so significant negative externalities do not harm um, people outside of the contract or what's going on. Lot, lot, lot to that. Okay, we're five minutes into it. I haven't even got to the barely any of the Constitution. Let's go over it real quick. Citizenship deals with that. General laws, bylaws, uh, which is internal govern, governing rules, uh, federal, state, and local, original authority, supermajority, like I said, 70% for anything at, at the monopolized level. Parent sector board, how that's structured. Their main job is to uh, divide the powers into 30 sectors. They don't have a regulatory authority. Um, sector boards, they do only when um, it's authorized to them. Compared to regulatory agencies, that's what 90% of this whole thing is. And everything else is built to support the CRAs, to make it work better. Um, the rating system is to have give high quality information from a wide variety of perspectives. Look at those videos. We still need to fund everything that we're doing. How we're going to do it, we're going to do through CRA fees and different things, but we got that covered. Debt, um, that's covered. That's a, that's also doing a transition from the current system to the um, new system. And let me move a little bit. Sorry, got some glare. glare. Okay, um, pockets of freedom. Um, that's going to be an important part of this for immigration and foreign policy. States partial acceptance per sector is going to be an important um, section in here. It's going to be minor. It's going to be more of a transition um, part of it, but... Look at those videos, and everything's on my website. The separation of responsibilities and authorities into 30 sectors. The parent sector board does that, but I have the um, outline, the beginning of it. And we got five in the charity system because all welfare goes away. Government welfare goes away. You, there is a mandate to give to charity. Um, it, the target is 5% um, of GDP or roughly $1 trillion, which is going to be a significant amount of money there. Um, foreign protection system is built on... Um, is split into five sectors. Highly important to understand we're going to have free enterprise military or significantly free enterprise military. Not 100% obviously, but there's going to be significant free enterprise in, um, military. A military authorization agency is the societal oversight to make sure nothing goes out of control. Um, different commander in chief from the di different um, top diplomat. So important to understand. Free enterprise, free enterprise, free enterprise, all the way down the line here, other than the law enforcement authorization. That's a societal oversight to say that you can have the badge or you can't have the badge. So if you're going out of, um, out of line, if you're creating problems out there, if you're not trained, if you're being a bully, if you, um, you have to get authorized. So you have to be trained, you have to have eternal affairs, you have to um, be monitored, you have to have a good record. If you um, start abusing the records, then you do lose your um, ability to have your badge. So anyway, free enterprise all around here, even the court system there. So a lot of standards, a lot, but lot better standards than we currently have, but by the way. Healthcare, two sectors, financial two sectors, really um, cool monetary policy that brings free enterprise and competitive money into the mix. Insurance, dealing with a transition from Social Security and Medicaid. Um, Make that Medicare, I'm sorry, Medicare. Medicaid goes away as well, that's part of the charity system. We'll deal with that on another video, or we already did those videos. Food, education, um, free enterprise education, uh, manufacturing, human resources and sales, identity, personal and business, um, very important sector there um, in many ways there. All, all these are important. Environmental, work safety, disability. Remember, okay, environmental is different from land and water. It's going to correspond, it's going to overlap, and we have to take care of the gray, gray areas, but there will be delineation between dealing with land and water and dealing with environmental rules. Two different um, ideas there, but I do understand the gray areas. Transportation, also a little bit of gray area with land and water and everything, because it has to be going across land or water, um, but there, there needs to be a difference. So we go free enterprise roads, whole nine yards, no problem there. Media and communication, and then land and water. Okay, this is my 30th video dealing with the sectors. Now, obviously, I've done 
um, probably 70 or maybe even 100 videos now on this constitution dealing with the rating systems and the CRAs and the parent sector board, every aspect of this. So I've done, uh, I, I don't know, maybe at least 60 or 70 videos dealing with the constitution on this. And then last year I did probably well over 100 videos dealing with many aspects. Okay, let's keep on going. Competitive regulatory agencies, just to refresh your memory, they are full governmental systems. They regulate, they govern, they send representatives up to the monopolized sector board level. It's at the city, state, and federal. And um, we'll, we'll deal with all that. Okay, I always like to come back to this screen because it's so important. You pick your, you select your CRA. You select your RA. And then they govern you. When something goes wrong and you need representation, you need a voice, you go to your RA, you go to your CRA, and they're your voice. They have real power. They have representative power. They work for you. Not just your re your delegate, your congressman, they don't work for this you. They work for 700,000 people or for a city council, however big your city is, 200,000, a million, 50,000, however big it is, they work for the, the people who voted for them. If you didn't vote for them, or even if you did vote for them, they can't please everybody. They can't be a representative of everybody. Not, not a possibility using the correct definition of representatives. Representatives needs to represent your opinions, your um, interest. You can't represent um, two people's interest when their interests are conflicting. I want to go to war. Somebody else doesn't want to go to war. You can't represent both of them. You have to vote for either war or not to go to war. Okay, and I'm not saying whether I want to go to war or not, by the way. I mean, obviously, there's times to do it and times not to do it. Regardless. Uh, um, okay, so... Land and water sector is established. Let's go through it. There's going to be a lot of arguments, a lot of discussion on each one of these clauses. I understand that. You have to go back and look at the full structure of the CRA. The full structure of the rating system. I've thought a lot about this, and this is one of the sectors that probably could use a little bit more thought pattern, a lot more input. But this is the structure of the rating system, the structure of the CRAs, is going to be able to deal with a lot of issues. Let's keep on going. The purpose of the land and water sector is to regulate land and water. Uh, to, you have to have a purpose, and it has to be established. And Okay, it is established. It established means it gets um, 12 CRAs, 12 RAs. All you have to do is have is 5% of um, GDP. I mean, I'm sorry. You have to have 5% of um, the citizens within your local, your state, or your federal um, jurisdiction, and then you get your... Um, you get your CRA, and then you get to be governed by them. Now, I understand there's going to be a lot of conflicts, especially in this one. Land and water is something we all share. We're going to need to have similar regulations. I understand this one's kind of unique. Um, we have some of the same problems with some of the other issues, but it's all dealt with within the um, system. The purpose of the land and water sector is to regulate land and water. Okay, sector 25, that's the identity sector must collect proportional real estate taxes when properly authorized. So land and water deals with real estate. So um, sector 25 can come over and collect um, taxes when properly authorized, which is not going to be often, but um, some places it needs to be. Real estate taxes must be on the occupant regardless of ownership. If there is no occupant, the owner, owner must pay the tax. So there's a lot to that. When, is, when do you collect taxes? When do you not? Obviously, there's um, some debt that we need to collect taxes on, and real estate is one of the issues, so that, that needs to happen. And there's other times when real estate is going to come into play, uh, funding for poli police or the prisons and the like. Not going to be a ton, but it needs to be there. The land and water sector must control zoning and quality of life ordinances. It's going to have a lot more city stuff. If you don't see it in the other, um, other um, sectors, like education, obviously going to deal with education. The police sector is going to deal with police. There's going to be a lot of other um, sectors dealing with a lot of issues. But this is a lot of city ordinances, um, noise ordinances, and stuff like that. Uh, building codes. There's going to be a lot to it. Um, and this does not describe it all, all the way. But the parent sector board will make sure you have a full list of things it's responsible for. So I'm, I'm not going to go into it now, but the system's set up to make sure everything's covered. 
state level or local level sector 30 sector boards with a 50% vote may designate small subdivisions, homeowners associations, business areas, and the like with control over specific, specific aspects of, of responsibilities. So maybe not all the aspects, but we want them to have certain aspects of um, control. Noise ordinances and building codes and how tall your grass is. Gets into the weeds. I know there's a lot more to it than that. But um, I want them to have a lot of um, control at the very, very local level. Now, it doesn't have to. You, you, can, um, you can apply or your, look, your subdivision does not have to go to all that. They can just do the full out city um, codes. But let's, let's keep on going. If 50% of the rating system representatives declare the removal or diminishment of a regulation would neg negatively impact the quality of life of the citizens or property values of the area, the regulations must remain. The rating system may set a rating floor on quality of life issues. So there's a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of issues switching over. But I just wanna make sure things aren't gonna go bad real quick because hey, it's competitive and this business can do whatever they want. If, if it's gonna um, lower the quality of life, the property values, you're going to bring in um, something super noisy or super smelly like a pig farm or something undesirable like a strip joint or something. You can, um, you can section places off for that and make sure sec you can section off your place against that or where that's not authorized. There's a lot to it, but um, somewhere, will, somewhere it will have the power. Sometimes the power will be at the sector board level. Sometimes it will be at the rating system. But um, everything will have a place, a home. Most of it's going to be at the CRA, but because everybody has to live in a neighborhood with um, 12 different CRAs. So I live in a neighborhood about 300, 400 um, homes. I'm sure within the, all 400, they'll pick um, 12 different CRAs at the local level. And we're going to have to um, organize just like we are right now. So... It's going to be similar to what we have right now, but with added benefits of um, having better representation. I select my representation. Um, it doesn't. My area does not have to be the same as the area a mile down the road. A little bit different um, situation, and a lot of things can um, change. I'm just saying there's a there's a full system for it. 100% of American land and water must be privately owned. No more government owned stuff. Now, a CRA can own it. So that's a semi-private, semi-governmental um, organization. So because it's semi-private, it, it is included and it's within the clause on the Constitution. Sector boards may only rent necessary office space. We don't want sector boards to be powerful. They will have some responsibility and they can rent some office space, but that's about it. Now, let's, we'll go into some other clauses in a minute, make sure we have city parks, public places and the like. So let's get to those. A state sector 30 may become exclusive to a geographic group of containing less than 1,000 entities. Make sure I read that right. Geographic group containing less than 1,000 entities. I think I need to rem um, remove the of in there. A CRA may start a new subdivision or may become exclusive with an agreement of 70% of the entities with a well-defined geographic group area. CRA's exclusive areas are governed by the state CRA for Sector 30 responsibilities. The state Sector 30 rating system may maintain the authority to set rating floors. We want some areas, some new subdivisions, to be a CRA exclusive. So everybody moving into that area, let's say a new, um, home, new neighborhood or whatever, they know it's going to be regulated by this one CRA. It might be a lot more conservative, might be a lot more liberal, it might be allowing a lot more tall grass and um, junk cars in the junk, junk cars around, or it could be very exclusive or very strict on uh, making sure every every lawn is manicured uh, perfectly. So we kind of have that with homeowner associations right now, but this is going to give you the ability to have better um, control on that. You get to move into a neighborhood the, the way you want to. Now, a lot of neighborhoods aren't going to be like that. New ones, we can start and see if that's going to be good. We want experimentation. 
every CRA is probably going to be having four or five um, around each around the state, four or five um, neighborhoods around the state, and see if people like to move into those neighborhoods or not. And we'll see which neighborhoods compete to have the best services, the best regulations, and the best um, bureaucracy surrounding that. Okay, let's keep on going. A percentage of the land and water per CRA must be under the ownership of a publicly traded corporation where stock ownership is available to all citizens. The rating system must create a rating floor for that percentage. So we want a we want a certain amount of land within each ge geographic area, loca local or the state, to be um, publicly owned, um, publicly owned corporations, which means you buy stock in it, and that's just publicly um, that's under the um, ownership now. Let's look at the next clause. A percentage of the land and water per CRA. Uh, must be declared public spaces. So it's important that public spaces means where any person may lawfully enter and travel. Maybe not at night time, there would be times where it could be closed off for maintenance or whatever, but um, they can lawfully enter or travel. Just like our private roads, anybody can travel on it. It's a public space. Now public space means you're, you're allowed to do your protesting, you're allowed to do your free speech, you're allowed to go go there, meet up, and associate with who you want to associate with. There's a lot to what a public space is. But a percentage of the land and water, even though it's privately owned, it's a public corporation, and it's designated, at least that percentage is designated as a public space. Um, not all of it, only a percentage of it, and the rating floor will offset that percentage. The rating system must create a rating floor for that percentage that includes ease of travel. You cannot, you cannot block somebody in by buying land surrounding them. You're, you're a little, you're a donut, and you don't own in the middle. But the person in the middle can't get in. That's just super silly. We're not going to allow that. Um, ease of travel. Um, if you own a piece of land that's five miles um, long, hundred yards wide, or whatever. Yeah, you have to have some roads going through it. No, no, no doubt about it. There will have to be easements going through. It has to have some ease of travel. Okay, Sector 30 CRAs must, must proportionally create nature parks open to the public and creating protection for nature. These are our state parks, our federal parks, our city parks. The environmental sector sector's rating system must create a rating floor dealing with environmental protection that Sector 30 must abide by. So there's, this is one of my crossovers. Obviously, environmental and land and water is going to be um, closely linked, and there's going to be some gray zones in there. The parent sector board will put nice defined lines, but people are still going to have some gray zones, and we'll um, see how that all interacts with each other. But you have checks and balances, what I'm trying to get at there. A 60% rating system vote may declare a company a, a utility. So we're talking about electric... It used to be phones, but phones not too relevant now because of cell phone service and stuff. Cable, TV, that used to be pretty exclusive, but now that we have satellite and you have competition with um, fiber optics and regular cable, it's a little bit different. Um, competition really helps, but some things are still a utility. Water, electric is still a utility. So if a 60% rating system vote may declare a company um, a utility. This vote forces a company to be a publicly traded corporation where any citizen may purchase stocks. So you, you can take ownership in that, especially if you're within that geographic area. That's why I use the word citizen in there. Um, let's see, um, this vote, and when I say citizen, within that geographic area dealing with that, they, they have more, um, more say on whether they want to buy that stock or not than somebody who lives outside that geographic area. But publicly owned company is can be bought by anybody. Um, now I say citizen, so maybe a foreign company can't. I mean, foreign companies and foreign money cannot come in and buy stock up. A citizen may. Okay, this vote also requires a corporation to be open to all customers and to respect civil liberties. So a even though it'd be a publicly traded company, a water comp water company or electric company cannot say no. I don't like I don't like you. You can't have electricity. No, that's not allowed. You are you are a utility. 
and you've got declared a utility. A declare, a utility has to be declared because of uh, anti-monopolistic um, practices or because there is a monopolistic um, nature of it. You cannot put more water lines down. You, can ha you cannot have five um, set, full sets of water lines and sewer lines and electric lines. Um, so some things could be declared a utility. So you, it has to be open to all customers. And to respect civil liberty rating floors. The rating system may make a partial list of requirements. So there'll be a whole list of things you can't do because of your utility. But the rating system can partial that out. Hey, you are kind of um, a utility, but not all the way. We want to be able to see, see that you're a public corporation, or we want to see that you're um, accepting any customer that comes in, or we want to see that you're respecting civil liberties. There's a lot to it. Um, and the rating system is there to work a lot of that out. We might be able to have the free speech, um, which is another sector. I think that's 29, 29 if I'm not mistaken, coming and say, hey, this is a civil liberty. You cannot stop us from um, staying our views because you are such a um, monopolistic um, company that has such a big market share of this whole thing that you are declared a utility. And that's only a very, for a very few things that, um, that now that company cannot do. Um, okay. I'm getting into a lot there. I totally understand that I'm getting into a lot, but I've thought about these clauses and a lot of things can be worked out just through the structure. There's, you have a representation. Your RA is going to fight for you. Your um, CRA is going to fight for you. And if they're not, switch to a different RA or a different CRA. Okay. The rating system may make requirements for a, a class of companies. A class of companies, a class of companies might be like um, hotels. You cannot. Um, you you might only be a small hotel somewhere, but we don't want any hotel to say no. You can't come up come in here because of your color, your skin, or something like that. Now, obviously, they should be able to keep away. Hey, I think you're doing prostitution out of here. Yeah, you can keep those people out. That's what a rating system can do. It can distinguish between um, discrimination based off of somebody's color of their skin versus what activity that you might be bringing in here that might be criminal or um, unsavory or whatever. So a rating system can do that, where laws can have a harder time doing that. The rating system may requ make requirements for a class of companies, semicolon. These rating system requirements must meet the standard of addressing significant negative externalities. So you cannot just call somebody a utility if there's no negative externality going on. And I and I make sure I say significant negative externalities. So a little bit, of, a little bit of ex negative externalities is fine, because everybody has to deal with somebody else having liberty. But when it becomes significant, then um, there's a problem. And it is a negative externality to discriminate by somebody by the color of their skin, because it harms the morale and nature of society at its at its at its um, core. So it cannot be everything, but that's why the rating system's in, in place. And I use the 60% on purpose, and if that has to be changed, we'll, we'll see if that, that needs to be 60 or 70 or 50, I don't know. But I think 60 is probably a pretty good range right there. A 70% vote of each of the CRA sector boards and rating systems of sector 25 and sector 30, which I said identity sector and um, land and water sector, is required for eminent domain. And the price must be at least double the fair market value. So eminent domain is not something I'm supportive of too much on. But I do recognize in, in some circumstances, when a road has to go from point A to point B, it has to make it there. Some circumstances where it's necessary. It's not ever necessary for a school or a library. It's not a government function or versus a private function. That should never be the um, distinguishing thing. A library never needs to be at a specific spot. A school never needs to be at a specific spot. This should be for a road, a canal, a um, something from it has to go from A to B, cables to run for electricity, uh, for, so you get the easements and the like. Electrical wires going across. 
that kind of stuff needs that um, eminent domain or at least an easement at an eminent domain. So there's a lot to it, but I make it a lot harder by having a 70% vote, not a 50% from the legislator, but a 70% vote from the sector board and rating system, which is very, very difficult, from two different sectors, and it has to be doubled on fair market value. So it's only gonna happen in extreme circumstances where something really needs to happen. And then somebody gets double um, the market value. So people are gonna make their own deals be way before that. So 95% of eminent domain is probably gonna go away. Um, maybe a little bit will stay with roads, but 95% of it will go away. Okay, pretty much done with this. I'm just gonna let you know that if you don't see an issue addressed within one of the sectors, remember the parent sector board will assign a sector for each of the current regulatory bodies, each of the responsibilities that we think government might need to handle. And it will put into um, the, one of the mission statements of one of the sectors. Sector 30 will be a catch-all for many city governmental responsibilities, not easily put into other ones. Now, I have two other sectors that are gonna be a little bit of a catch-all as well, but this is more gonna be for city type of um, catch-alls, um, regulatory catch-alls. And it might be some other ones I don't, it's hard to go through. There's literally many, many hundreds of regulatory um, bodies out there. I can't go through them all. Okay, it's interesting to understand that um, here's 15 of the um, sectors, I mean 15 of the sectors, charity system, foreign protection system, and violent crime. So look at those, how each one of those is gonna be affected by the land and water, which some um, than the other 15. So you get a good um, rundown. It's important to understand that you select your CRA, you select your RA, they're your voice. Sometimes they're gonna be 100% exclusively um, governing a certain sector. And they're gonna be competing with other CRAs exclusively um, governing, not a sector, a subdivision. Four, four or 500 um, businesses or um, homes. Now, I try to put a limit of a thousand where it can be exclusive, but we'll, we'll see how each one works. Now, at the beginning, most of it's not going to be exclusive, but as time goes on, a CRA is going to apply for a grant to be, hey, this is a new piece of land. It used to be a big old farm. I want to put 400, 400 homes here, and I want to be exclusive to that. They, they can do that. They, they have to buy that up. So CRA, so they can buy it up, and then they um, develop that land and the like, um, and the like. And other CRAs will do the same. Now, um, some other ones might say, "Hey, that's working really well for us, um, having all the CRAs competing for um, what the regulations are going to be for the monopolized regulations about um, grass height and noise ordinances and all that stuff. It might be too burdensome." We'll see, we'll see which one works better. Anyway, this is my 30th of the um, 30th of the 30 sectors. So I'm almost done, I'm gonna do a transition video and then a wrap up question and answer type of video dealing with the constitution and then I'm gonna really go in and really go through my website and um, do some more. I hired my first person only about five hours a week right now so it's not a lot of hours, but she's gonna do social media do some editing of the website, editing of the, um, my papers, and we'll, we'll see where everything goes. So please consider a donation to Haley 2024 The Movement. I got my 501c3, and until the next video.